Have you ever tried to lose weight only just to feel constantly hungry and tired or that your metabolism is slowing down to a crawl? What if I told you that one simple change, getting enough protein, could make all the difference? Hello and welcome, I'm Sonia Hollis, a qualified nutritional therapist and today we're going to be talking about one of the most important yet often misunderstood macronutrient when it comes to weight management and that's protein. In this session we're going to cover how protein plays a critical role in weight loss, how it impacts your metabolism, satiety and body composition, the truth about protein and concerns regarding bone and kidney health and practical ways to ensure that you're getting enough protein in your diet. So by the end of this video, you're going to have a clear understanding of why protein is essential, how much you need and how to easily incorporate it into your meals for sustainable weight loss and better overall health. So let's dive in. When it comes to losing weight, many people focus on calories in versus calories out, but the type of calories that you consume matters just as much. Protein is unique because it not only helps with weight loss, but also ensures you're losing fat whilst preserving lean muscle mass. And this is something that becomes increasingly important as we age. So here are three reasons why protein is so important. Protein increases satiety and reduces hunger. One of the biggest challenges that many people find when they're trying to lose weight is actually managing their hunger. Protein is the most satiating macronutrient, meaning it keeps you fuller for longer. And this happens through multiple mechanisms. Protein increases the release of hormones like GLP-1, CCK and PYY all of which signal fullness to the brain, helping to naturally reduce calorie intake. Protein also lowers levels of ghrelin, and that is the hormone that triggers hunger, making it easier to control food cravings. Unlike carbohydrates and fat, proteins require more energy to digest and metabolize. So this process, known as diet-induced thermogenesis, means that you burn more calories simply by eating more protein-rich foods. Studies have shown that people who consume higher protein diets naturally eat fewer calories throughout the day, leading to easier weight loss without the constant battle of feeling hungry. A key concern with weight loss is that losing weight doesn't always mean losing fat. Many diets result in actual muscle loss, which slows metabolism over time. Protein plays a crucial role in preserving lean muscle mass, which helps to keep your metabolic rate higher and helps with longer term fat loss. Muscle is metabolically active, meaning the more muscle that you have, the more calories you burn at rest. Research has consistently shown that higher protein diets prevent the decline in resting metabolic rate that typically occurs during weight loss. One meta-analysis of 24 randomized controlled trials found that people following a high protein diet retained significantly more muscle mass and had a higher metabolism compared to those on standard protein diets. The truth about protein, bone health and kidney function. You may have heard concerns that high protein diets can be harmful to your bones or kidneys. So now let's just clear this up. Older theories suggested that protein increases calcium loss from bones leading to osteoporosis. However, recent large scale studies and meta-analysis showed that higher protein intake actually supports bone health especially in older adults. In fact, a long-term study from the Framingham Osteoporosis Study found that higher protein intake was associated with reduced bone loss over four years. So instead of harming your bones, protein actually helps prevent osteoporosis and fractures. So moving on to kidney function. One of the most common concerns about protein intake is its effect on kidney health. So let's set the record straight. 
For healthy individuals, there is no strong evidence that a high protein diet harms kidney function. Research consistently shows that in people with normal kidney health, higher protein intake does not cause kidney damage. For example, a two-year study of 307 obese adults found that higher protein intake had no negative effect on kidney function. Similarly, data from the Nurses Health Study, which followed over 1,600 women, showed no harmful effect on kidney function from increased protein consumption. However, for individuals with existing kidney disease or impaired kidney function, protein intake may need to be adjusted. In the Nurses Health Study that I mentioned before, researchers observed that those with mild renal insufficiency Increase in protein intake by 10 grams was associated with a slight reduction in GFR. So this suggests that in those with pre-existing kidney concerns, protein intake should be monitored and adjusted accordingly. So the key takeaway, if your kidneys are healthy, higher protein intake is not a concern. But if you have kidney disease, or at risk of kidney disease, then it's important to consult a healthcare professional to tailor your protein intake to your specific needs. So now that we've established that protein is both safe and beneficial, let's talk about how much you actually need. The recommended daily allowance for protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. However, research shows that for optimal weight loss and muscle preservation, a higher intake is beneficial. So for example, for those looking for weight loss and muscle maintenance, ideally you need to be having between 1.2 grams to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. For those active individuals or those who are weight training, then you would need between 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So let's put this into context. For example, if you weigh 70 kilograms or 154 pounds, your optimal protein intake for weight loss would be between 84 to 112 grams per day. So if you struggle to hit this target, incorporating protein rich foods like lean meats, fish, eggs, dairy, legumes, tofu and protein supplements can help. It can also be difficult, I know, to work out how much protein you need. So I've included a downloadable handout in the description below of actually what 30 grams of protein looks like. You'll also find some high protein recipes along there to help you to get started. So here are some practical tips to increase your protein intake. Start your day with protein. A high protein breakfast helps to regulate our blood sugar and also helps to keep you fuller for longer. So here are some easy and delicious high protein breakfast ideas. Scrambled eggs with smoked salmon and spinach. Greek yogurt and berry parfait. A protein smoothie. Cottage cheese and almond butter toast or an omelette with cheese and mushrooms. These options are balanced, satisfying and easy to prepare, making them great choices for staying full and energised throughout the morning. You'll find another handout in the description below that breaks down how to reach 125 grams of protein through the day. Include protein in every meal. Aim to have a source of protein at every single meal, including snacks, to help maintain satiety and muscle mass. Snack in the smart way. Instead of carb-heavy snacks, opt for protein-rich snacks like cottage cheese, nuts or boiled eggs. Prioritise whole food sources. While protein powders can help, focus on whole food like fish, poultry, beans and lentils. And lastly, cook in batches. Get yourself prepared, so meal prep high protein meals in advance to ensure that you're hitting your protein targets more easily. So to summarise, protein keeps you fuller for longer, helping you to naturally reduce your calorie intake. 
it increases energy expenditure, boosting your metabolism. It preserves lean muscle mass, preventing the metabolic slowdown that often comes with weight loss. And it supports bone health and does not harm your kidney function in healthy individuals. So if you're looking to lose weight in a healthy, sustainable way while maintaining strength, prioritizing protein is one of the most effective strategies that you can implement. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found the information useful and please make sure to remember to hit the like and subscribe and also take a look at below with the description for all of the handouts that I want to include. That's it. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.